Hello everyone, how's it going? Elliot here again. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at three different Game Boys. Now, what all of these have in common is that they play Game Boy Advance games and they're backlit. Obviously, for those of you who know the difference between a frontlit Game Boy and a backlit Game Boy, you all know that the backlit Game Boy is far superior. It holds a much better image. There's far more accurate representations of the colors compared to the frontlight one, which just looks super washed out and quite awful. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro and get straight into the video. So two of these Game Boys, the Game Boy Micro and the Game Boy Advance SP AGS 101, both of these are stock Game Boys. These both came out in around 2005, pretty much at the same time to be honest with you. At this time the DS was obviously coming out and uh, the DS played your Game Boy Advance game so there wasn't much incentive to be buying another Game Boy console that didn't play the new gen games. So these never really sold too, too well and thus making them quite expensive. In fact, the AGS-101 didn't even make it over to the UK. It was released in China, uh, Australia, America. I said Japan in one of my old videos, but it wasn't Japan. I got it wrong. It was um, China, kind of Hong Kong. Um, it came out over there under IQ. The Game Boy Micro was exactly the same. Um, we did get these in the UK though. In fact, we got these in a, in a couple of colors that you couldn't get over there in America. I think the green one. And um, yeah, the Game Boy Micro is an absolutely gorgeous little thing. It's, it's got a metal build, which is for the first time we ever saw that on any Nintendo handheld. And uh, yeah, it's absolutely stunning. The only thing that is plastic is uh, the buttons and the face plates. So uh, yeah, really, really nice little thing. Both of these are pretty much the same kind of price. You wouldn't be picking up a AGS-101 for less than about 50 pounds, if you're lucky, to be honest with you. And it's exactly the same with a Game Boy Micro. Um, you're not gonna get a Game Boy Micro for less than 50 pounds. If you do, it's probably gonna be pink and it'll probably be a little bit beaten up. And then we're also going to be looking at the modded Game Boy Advance that I have done. So the reason why I wanted to chuck this one into the mix is that this is probably uh, the best Game Boy. So if you came here, just to quickly find out your answer to that, um, it's probably this one. Now, there's a lot of reasons why uh, that is, and we're gonna look at those um, in a little bit more detail going forward. It just kind of comes in at the most inexpensive, comfortable, backwards compatibility, portable, and ultimately one of just the best little mods that you can do to a Game Boy. Most powerful mod as well. It's very, very simple to do and uh, all of a sudden you have this incredible uh, backlit Game Boy. So let's go ahead and talk then about each of them and uh, why I think each of them are very, very good, but why the Game Boy Advance uh, mod is probably the best one. So the Game Boy Micro, as I just mentioned, is an absolutely amazing little thing. Um, the metal build quality is absolutely stunning. The size of it is just gorgeous. Um, the feel of it is amazing. The weight of it is absolutely great. And of course, the backlit screen is uh, just everything. Now, the one thing that makes the Game Boy Micro very, very good is that the pixel ratio is actually one to one. So the screen might be a lot smaller, but when you turn it on and you have a game in it, you can really notice the fact that the screen is just, it just looks far more high definition. And um, yeah, that, that does actually make a big difference, especially when you have them side by side. Now there is one massive, massive drawback from the Game Boy Micro, and that's probably why it's not called the Game Boy Advance Micro. A lot of people say it's the GBA Micro, but it's not. It's just the Game Boy Micro. Um, this doesn't have any backwards compatibility at all. It plays Game Boy Advance games, which is absolutely great. You can uh, get things like flashcards, put them in there, and you pretty much have this little ultimate little tiny device in your pocket. But I'm a sucker for the old games, you know, a little bit of Tetris, Zelda DX, and unfortunately you can't play this on here. So for that reason, unfortunately, I can't give the Game of Micro the win. The other reason as well is although the form factor is just gorgeous and stunning, um, you can't actually get a lot of playability out of this without it getting quite uncomfortable. In fact, my thumbs are big enough that they cover both the buttons um, as it is, so it does, does get a little bit kind of like with your fingertip kind of thing, and, and unfortunately that does ruin the, um, the, the 
feeling for me. But that being said, it's a solid, solid Game Boy and it's perfect just to sneak around with you and uh, take with you on a bus and just kind of fly under the radar playing this cool little device which people don't really know a lot about. Next up, we're going to have the Game Boy Advance SP. Now, I'm sure for most of you watching, this was the one that you had uh, as a child, although this one is the AGS 101 version. This is an American version. I picked this up from eBay.us, um, I think for about $30, but unfortunately there was like $20 shipping, so the whole thing came to about £40, which before you know it, isn't a fantastic deal, but it's still pretty good in terms of AGS 101 standards. Now this thing would have taken the win for me as being one of the best Game Boys if it wasn't for how scarce they were in the UK. Um, you know, they're a little bit easier to find in America, but unfortunately for people who just want to buy a nice Game Boy, it's not exactly the most viable one because it is still a little bit difficult to obtain. The other difficulty as well is that although it's like a clamshell design and that, that doesn't take up a lot of room, unfortunately it's a little bit kind of clammy and um, compact and, and it does get a little bit uncomfortable. You can get grips for these things, but and then it kind of removes the portability aspect of it. The screen has two brightness settings and obviously you're not going to play with the first one because the second one is far brighter and just looks absolutely gorgeous. I'd say these two are pretty much on the same league with each other. Um, the L and R buttons as well are super, super nubby and, and quite awful, but uh, but yeah, an absolutely solid, solid console. Definitely, if you can pick one of these up, I recommend that you do. And last but not least, the Game Boy Advance. A lot of people ask me what Game Boy I recommend, and this is ultimately the one that I do recommend. The L and R buttons are absolutely spot on, and honestly, if I feel like if they put a backlight in this from the beginning, which is what a lot of people were hoping they would do, the Nintendo history of handheld gaming would be completely different, honestly. This, it would have just been a, an incredible, incredible feat for Nintendo. It's not so big that it's uncomfortable or unwieldy to bring around with you. It's certainly smaller than a DMG and um, probably the same size as like a DS. And uh, yeah, of course you can play your regular Game Boy games as you can on the SP. And uh, for that reason, I'm probably going to have to give it the win. There is a few different ribbon cables that you can buy. I've reviewed two, but I think there's actually now some slightly better ones that are out there. So maybe I'll have a little look at those if you're interested. And um, yeah, the prices of building one of these things is just coming down and down and down. And eventually, it's going to be the most affordable Game Boy to buy because of the fact that people are reproducing the things to make it right now, unlike the Game Boy Micro and the Game Boy Advance SP. So if you are interested, I'll leave the link to where I built one of these things. And um, let me know which one you think is the best. I didn't include things like the GBC 101 because that doesn't play Game Boy Advance games. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.